Hey, and welcome back to another eBay parts repair playlist video. Uh, the playlist of uh, videos where I go on eBay and buy the cheapest items I can find, uh, cheapest electronic items that I can find for usually under $20. Uh, I used to have some rules for this series, but I don't really follow them anymore. Um, but this is also gonna be a part slot video. So I'm thinking of making a new album where I put all the part slot videos, like where I buy a bunch of items in one lot. Uh, this is a two part lot, so it's not that big, but I thought this will be a great uh, new series as well. Also, don't forget to hit that like button and go ahead and check out my channel. And if you like what you see, please consider hitting the subscribe button. Um, also hit that bell notification button so you're notified whenever I upload a new video. I'm also on Instagram and Discord, so you can find me there in the links in the description. All right, let's jump right in. So this is the original listing to this. It's two iPods. So I've been doing a lot of iPods recently. That's because um, I just thought, you know, I don't want to, uh, that's pretty tough there. What's that tape? Uh, I don't want to like stick to phones only. So I want to be a bit more flexible. So I thought I'll do iPods and I really like iPods. Um, so what we have here is, as you can see in the pictures, two iPod Nanos, one uh, sixth gen and one second gen. Both come with cables, so that's great. So we have one of those cables here. This is the type two cable. How do I know? The type one cable was slightly curved at the back here. This is, so this is a type two. This is probably from the sixth gen. And it was listed as they don't turn on. Uh, he can't get them to power on. So here's one. Here's the 6th gen nano, it's a gray one. And I'm really happy, look at this. This one is spotless too. Now if you remember my video yesterday, or was it day before, I can't remember. I bought another one of these in another part slot with two other phones. And this one was also pristine, spotless. This, and the one I have here today is also really pristine and spotless as you can see there. So I'm really happy. Let's see if this one has engravings. Nope, no engravings, because this one actually had an engraving. It said, live, life is loving and laughing. So this one has a bad battery, but all I need to do is replace the battery. So I'm really happy with that. I'm extra happy with this, because this actually looks a bit better. Look at that. No scratches, used really carefully. I think the listing said something about his uh, uh, mother-in-law using this. I don't know. It was. I remember something like that in the description, the... The thing was described as both of these iPods were used by his mother-in-law and she couldn't get them to turn on, but it's in excellent condition. So really happy with that. Let's look at the other one. Uh, iPod Nano second gen. Um, is this a first gen or a second gen? It's a second gen, okay. So I already have one of these uh, back home. I really like them. Um, this thing is one of those things that has only the hold switch um, and I think you turn it on with this, but let's see, it's not gonna turn on because it was listed as broken, listed as not turning on. Suppose there's another cable. Yeah, there's another cable. Uh, so it's another type two cable. Okay. So let's plug these in and see what we get. Let's use one of this. Oh, wait, he said that it won't turn on. So it may be even both of the cables that are broken. Oh, what's this? What's this? Oh, so it does turn on. It just has a bad display. Wait, the display is not bad. Look, look at that. There's nothing wrong with the pixels. If you can see there, it kind of comes on for a bit. Wait, I didn't, I didn't even turn it on. Well, I did press the button for a short time. Aha. Aha, aha. I think I know what's wrong with this. We don't have a bad display. We have a bad ribbon. Now... That is an easy fix. It's just as much as unplugging it and replugging it in. So we might get lucky with this. Hold up, let me plug this in and see what happens. Um, so we might be in luck here. We might just have a uh, simple ribbon cable issue, um, but it could be something worse as well, but it's definitely not a hardware issue in terms of the motherboard because it turns on as you s just saw there. Um, so the reason I bought this lot is also because of the 6th gen. Um, I really like this thing for some reason. So let's see, let's give this power. Um, hmm. 
What if this is just a software issue? Okay, I think that this might actually be a software issue instead of a hardware issue. So we'll try and reset that in a bit. It might even have a good battery. We'll try and reset that in a bit. Uh, but let's plug this one in. This one I'm pretty sure has a shot battery or something. Um, I hate opening these old second gens because you got to pull the internals out from the bottom here. They're pretty annoying. R they're really annoying. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's on. Let me bring that closer. So I think we have a shot display. I think we have a bad display. Yeah, this this thing is on. This thing is on. Okay, so we have we have good motherboards that's because they're turning on. So what we're gonna do is let me go get my laptop and let's try restoring these two and maybe that might even fix them. So this is probably gonna be a pretty short video if that's the case. All right, hold up. Okay, so I have my laptop set up there. Let's go ahead and plug this guy in. Um, I'm not sure if I'll have to take it apart, but let's just, let's just hope that it's a software only issue. Cause I saw the display works at some points when you give it some touch. There we go, there, it says connected. Bob Carroll's iPod. Okay. Um, let's see, uh, could we restore this thing? Uh, let's go to Finder, um, restore iPod. Yep. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, so even after resetting it, this is not cooperating. Um, it's still not responding to touch properly and it's all over the place. So I'm guessing it's just a ribbon connector. This one, the display is black. So, and again, I'll play that sound. It's, it's working under there, but it's just not displaying. So let's put this into disk mode, menu and select. Now the problem here is I don't know when to change my fingers. I'm roughly guessing it's eight seconds. So I don't know, it, there's nothing showing on screen to show me that it's in disk mode. So I'm kind of eyeballing it there because you hold the menu and the select button for eight, about eight seconds and then you switch to the select and play pause button. Um, I can't tell without seeing the screen when it switches over. So it's going to be a bit hard with this one. So I plugged it in. Let's see what happens. Um, nothing for now. Maybe it's restarting. Let's see what happens. Um, yep, it came up again. So it's the same person. So this it's from the same person. So this is probably her older iPod and the other one's a newer one. So let's restore this thing as well. Um, I don't think restoring it is going to fix it, but you know, let's just see. But we're going to have to probably take this one apart as well. So it's going to be a bit of a lengthy video. Um, so I'll just go ahead and restore this off camera and um, I will be right back. So restoring it didn't fix it, obviously. Uh, as you can see here, there's nothing on screen. Um, so let's go ahead and take this one apart first and then this one, all right? have our connectors here there are three connectors i think one's the battery one's the display um no two display one battery okay still a bit of glue there um you gotta be very careful with this um 
I'm wondering which one is which because they're all bundled together. So that one's that. And uh, yeah, it's this one. They're all stuck together. So what's holding it back? Now I could just pull this up, but considering how fragile these connectors look, I don't want to do that. Okay, we have separation. So there's some marks on the back of this. Um, I don't know if that's normal, but remember in the last video when I did a video on the uh, the other iPod, I told you how easy it was to repair a sixth gen. That's how easy. There's no funky uh, screws in weird places. There is not much glue. Um, it's really easy to open one of these things. I have not opened one of these in the past. And this was, I can easily say this was by far the easiest repair on an iPod I've ever done. Um, or easiest opening as far. I don't know how hard these are to repair, but the easiest and the fastest I've opened an iPod. What's the hardest you ask? Uh, the iPod Touch 4 generation. I don't have one of those things on me now, but I do have like three of them at home. Uh, I hate I hate taking that apart. Number one, the glue on the screen is really hard to take apart. Number two, the digitizer connector is under the board. It's like the boards are like this. The LCD connector is up, so you can just easily take it. But you have to lift the entire board, remove all the screws, remove the battery uh, battery's faceplate, lift it up a bit, put a screwdriver under, then pull it down like that. I don't know why they go with such a weird design, but whatever. Let me just wipe this screen down a bit. The back looks a bit, is that water? Is that moisture? Looks like it. Maybe we might have a moisture damage screen. Maybe water got into it somehow. Let's hope not because a moisture damage screen is 95% of the time history. So let's try reconnecting this bad boy and see what happens. Um, I'm really, uh, don't like this uh this connector here that's really fragile um but i don't know why people don't like like they say this thing is hard that one of the hardest ipods to take apart i beg to differ it's pretty easy sure these connectors are super fragile but taking it apart is a breeze and my worst personally what i think is the worst part of fixing stuff is taking it apart um so we're still getting that funny screen um, wait, where did it go off? Okay, so it's not going to be fixed that easy, I guess. Um, what could be the issue? So I want to have a closer look at this. Um, let, let me bring that in. Um, all the resistors on there look okay. Um, it looks fine to me, as far as I can tell. Um, the touch is also not that responsive. Um, it's really, the touch is a bit funny. But I don't know what what could be the issue here. Uh, let me have a closer look at this off camera and I'll be right back. Okay, so I think I know what's up here. There's some sort of moisture in this display. Um, we're gonna give it a bit of a heat treatment here with the heat gun, but um, replacing this display is not gonna be a big deal. It's like five or 10 bucks. So I might end up replacing it in a different video, but let's see if we can heat it into back, back into working. Because I've seen uh, certain water damage displays start working again properly after a bit of good heating. I've turned the heat gun down to a low setting. Um, there's no temperature gauge on this, but uh, it's a low setting, so I can just give it some uniform heat. I don't want to heat it up too much. Let's hope it works. If not, I mean, I'll just go ahead and buy the display and the, the digitizer combination. Um, it's no big deal. But I'm pretty sure there's water over there in the uh, control circuit there on the resistors. And it's, it's those, uh, these ribbons, they absorb water. Um, I don't know if I've uploaded a video. I have another iPod Nano, uh, third gen, that has a similar problem, but I, that video will come up in a few days maybe, but maybe not. That's a complete other disaster on its own. It has, um, 
something what i what i'm assuming is a, uh, a fizzy drink uh soda um coca-cola or something has found its way into the the between the ribbon like these are layered all of these ribbon parts are layered coca-cola or something has found its way into the the layers and got stuck there that uh, so that displays history um but if it's water it, it would evaporate but coca-cola has sugar in it so it's got sugar and uh everything that whatever whatever else coca-cola is made of sugar it's mostly sugar but all that stuff is just going to get deposited in there and destroy the the ribbon but i'm assuming this is just water because i could wipe it away with my finger like you can see that stain over there so it's probably not water because it was sealed probably it's probably just moisture maybe they went from a really warm climate to a cold climate and this didn't have time to settle in um but i've done that myself and nothing has happened to any of my devices but i don't know so replacing the display is not a big deal um we shall see uh i'll keep trying this uh off camera if it does not uh work and at the end of the day even if i end up damaging the display by he oh, heating it a bit too much it's still broken so i might i might fix it i might break it even more but there's no point in trying to take this display to the to a further level and try and fix it because it's not that it's not really that worth might as well replace it so okay so it's still doing its uh flickering uh oh it looks a bit better uh it looks i mean the touch response it looks a bit better um I don't know you know what i'll keep screwing with this display off camera with the heat gun and all that stuff and uh, if it if it becomes better i'll put it on the video if not we'll just leave it as this ipod is got a bad display for now in the meantime let's jump to this one okay so the second gen ipod nano i really hate taking these things apart which includes the first gen as well because they're re you gotta slide the uh the entire thing out of the um the housing and sometimes it does not cooperate it does not want to come out so these things are really annoying um as you can see it's not straightforward it's just taking these things are glued in place by the way um Okay, so we have it out um, and let's see what we have here. The display looks fine from the outside, like I said before. Um, and now this is what I hate about some of these iPods is we don't have access to the click wheel and any of the actual controls. So that's a bit annoying, but we shall see. Um, we know that battery supply and power because it worked off the uh, charger. Um, let's take that charger again, plug it in, see what happens, um, just to double check. So, let's plug that in. We're not getting anything. Could it be a bad control? Hold up. Um, 
the boat looks fine. I don't see any blown uh, resistors or anything like that. So we'll have to dig a bit deeper here. This thing keeps hanging off the side, which kind of annoys me. Um, so I remember, take it out from the side like that. It's attached to this, so you got to be careful with that. Um, so let's get the display off here. It's stuck to the battery, so I might want to just dis like detach it. So let's get rid of this shielding. Okay, so we have the LCD, um, let's unplug it, we have corrosion, if you can see there, we have corrosion there, so we'll probably have to clean that out, is this a pull tab or is this a pop up one, oh, it's pop up, okay. So we have a lot of corrosion there, probably on the power end of things. So that's why it wasn't even turning on. Um, let's clean it with alcohol, see what happens. The uh, connector is also pretty corroded there. Got some pins that are corroded there. So let's go get a bit of alcohol, rubbing alcohol and see what happens. Which, which side is hold, which side is, uh... okay, so it's, it's on the on position, but we're still not getting anything. Um, let's see. So I know the thing is on because when we plugged in the click wheel, it did turn, it did make some sounds. So we're not getting anything from this display. What I'm pretty sure is that line that's got the corrosion on it is the power line. So it's not supplying power to the display. So yeah, it's not, not really promising. Um, there's nothing much that I can do for this um, apart from cleaning it. Um, I'm not, I've never reflowed a connector like this. I don't think I can. I think the display is fine now. Yeah, the display is fine. It's just the, uh, the connector that's damaged. Um, there's a lot of that stuff there. So what I'll do is, um, let me get a needle, hold up. So I couldn't find a needle, but this is the next best thing. Um, what I see, I don't know if that's coming under, or coming on camera there. There's a lot of that stuff under these pins as well, like over there. But I don't think I can get to it, even with an if I had a needle. Um, let's see. Come on. I just because the what what happens is the green stuff when it solidifies, it I don't think it conducts electricity or it shorts out the uh, connectors. So it's not letting the connectors on the display touch the touch where it's supposed to touch. So that's what's happening there. Oh, it's just, yeah, I think that um, that's completely fried, that connector there. Yeah, that's shot. Anyway, I won't spend too much time on this. Um, I'll deal with this in my free time. Maybe I might get it to work, maybe not, I don't know. But for now, it's broken. So I'll go back and I'll try and mess around with the Nano, the iPod Nano um, off camera, and I'll let you know if I get any results.
So I'm having a bit of success with heating the display um, continuously. It's not, it's no longer like, um, it, it is responding to touch and it's no longer flickering. Um, and it just like, it just uh, stays like that. And it, it does respond to touch, but it occasionally flickers like that. But it's getting a bit better because uh, I was able to get into settings and check some stuff out as well. So I'll keep trying that. So I tried a bit more and it's not getting, sometimes it gets worse, sometimes it gets better. I don't know. Uh, it's probably just water damage or something that I can't fix. So I just, I'll go, I'll just go ahead and buy a new display. It's like 10 bucks or something. So it's no big deal. I'll probably make a video on that. I'm not sure, but it's pretty straightforward. Just plug it in and put the uh, adhesive back. So yeah, I guess that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to hit that like button and check out my channel. And if you like what you see, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Thumbs up and I'll see you guys in my next video.